Hello and welcome to First Citizens You First series. I'm your host, Chuck Walkendorfer, President of Distribution at Think to Perform, a business and sports consulting firm based out of Minneapolis. We are bringing you this series uh, titled Improved Decision Making and Stress Management. Our topic today is the three bucket theory. I am joined today by my esteemed uh, Think to Perform colleague, Bob Nedball. A brief introduction of Bob. Bob is a senior vice president with Think to Perform. He coaches and develops business owners, leaders, and their teams seeking to achieve increasing levels of performance, growth, and personal satisfaction through work in emotional and moral intelligence, interpersonal effectiveness, and mindfulness. He works with clients in a variety of industries, including the nonprofit sector, financial services, information technology, and law. Bob started his career in banking and technology, transitioning to technology consulting, building a $10 million practice for a consulting firm serving nonprofit and federal government clients. After the sale of the firm, Bob invested 12 years serving the nonprofit sector, holding leadership positions with the American Educational Research Association, the CFP Board, and Scrum Alliance before he joined Think to Perform. Bob is a Bachelor of Science in Economics from George Mason University and holds the Certified Professional Coactive Coaching designation from the Coactive Training Institute, considered the gold standard by the Institute of Coaching, a McLean affiliate of the Harvard Medical School. He brings research on human behavior, neuroscience, and emotional intelligence to his client work in profoundly simple and practical ways. I know we'll hear a lot about the application of that here today uh, from Bob. Bob grew up in McLean, Virginia, spending most of his life in the Washington, D.C. area. Today, he and his beautiful wife, Karen, live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Welcome, Bob, to the First Citizens You First series. Hey, Chuck, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a beautiful day here in Fort Collins, and uh, I'm excited about being a part of the journey with First Citizens. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, let's get to it, Bob. Talk to us about uh, the three bucket theory and why it's important today. Yeah. So one of the things we all are uh, quite aware of is the socioeconomic environment we find ourselves in and the level of uncertainty and uh, ambiguity uh, that exists. Now, what we know is that when we are exposed to that, uh, it, uh, the increases in our stress can impair our decision-making ability. Now, in an earlier session, I recall that you had made this outstanding point that decision-making is the key factor in influencing our performance in life. You mentioned that human beings on average, make about 35,000 decisions a day. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not trying to improve all of those, right? But if we could just make two or three more effective decisions each day, that's not too much to ask. That's up to 700 to 1,000 better decisions over the course of the year, and that's going to have a profound impact on our lives, right? So I'd like to connect that notion, the importance of decision-making in our performance, with our topic today. And what I would in, uh, encourage uh, First Citizens uh, clients to think about is that if we consistently apply the learning from today's topic, the three bucket theory, it can have a significant uh, impact on the decision making and improving outcomes in your lives. And as a reminder for our listeners, because I know not maybe not all of uh, the listeners today have listened to all four series, so I want to reground us in why decision making is important. Performance in any area of life, I don't care what you do for a living, where you live, the color of your skin, male or female, the performance in any area of life is a function of three things. It's a function of our talent. So our talent being things that we're always good at, things that we can really never remember learning. We just had a natural affinity for. So things like maybe math or music or sports. Part number two of performance are skills. So skills are things we develop over our lifetime. So I may have had a talent for music, but I developed a skill to play the piano. And the third part of performance is decision-making. So it's talent plus skills plus decision-making equals performance. And of the three, decision-making has twice the impact on performance than talent and skill combined. I'm not suggesting that talent and skill don't matter. They just don't matter as much as decision-making. 
And unlike our IQ, which we can't improve, we can with practice and focus and effort become better decision makers. And as you're suggesting, Bob, we don't need to make all 35,000 uh, better each day, but we've probably got to make a handful. And making two, three, four, five decisions better a day is going to have a big impact 12 months, five years, 10 years from now over the course of our lifetime. So talk to us about exactly. the theory. Yeah. All right. So first we've got bucket one. We're just going to skim on the surface here and peel back the uh, layers of the onion, if you will, as we go. So bucket one, Chuck, those are things that we can control. Now bucket number two are things that we can influence. And bucket three are things that we can neither control nor influence. All right, so let's talk a little more about bucket one. So there are only really two things that fall into bucket one. That's our behavior and our decision making. Mm. So we can control, Chuck, how we respond to events or situations in our lives. We can control how we respond to other people. And those are the choices we make. A quick example. So you and I are on this webinar today, and let's say I lose my internet connection. And I'm scrambling, and I think, you know, there's a couple of choices I have here. I, I could get caught up in why this is happening to me. Or I could focus on what's my next best choice. I know, I'm going to grab my cell phone. I'm going to dial back in. Chuck and I are going to enjoy a laugh about technology, and then we're going to continue our conversation. So bucket two are the things that we can influence. Now, these are our are things like our relations and our health. These are two great examples of things that we can influence. Now, back to that uh, example that I uh, gave you, Chuck, of uh, losing my internet connection. What are you going to think if I call back in and I'm frustrated, I'm complaining about what just happened to me? How are you going to respond to that? Well, it's definitely going to have an impact on me. If you're frustrated, I'm going to feel that, and your your frustration may actually uh, affect me and, and may influence my behavior. That's exactly right. We don't always recognize that. So what if I call back in? I'm calm, cool, collected. You and I have a laugh about how awesome technology can be, and how's that going to make you feel? I think positive and like we're continuing on with our conversation in a productive way. I, you know, you won't have transferred any kind of negativity that you might have felt around the, the frustration of your technology not working. And so I, th I would imagine, you know, instead of negatively influencing me, you'd, you'd have more of a positive influence. That's exactly right, Chuck. All right. So here's the key insight for our listeners. The better we focus on bucket one, actually the influence in our lives grows in bucket two. Mm. Now, now there, there are times, and so be very clear, what we're not uh, promoting here is this idea that we only ever focus on what we can control. There's you know, we're, times we're living and focusing on bucket two. And I've got a client uh, I just met with yesterday, and he's a commercial property owner. He's working on a property expansion, but it's been stalled out for, for weeks because the lender has not been responsive, right? So he's not getting anywhere on the loan, just construction's been delayed. So when we spoke about this a few weeks ago, his, um, we, we talked about the three bucket theory. And we noticed a couple things about the, where he was focused. So fast forward to yesterday, and he has this big grin on his face. And he says, Bob, you know, I realized how frustrated I was because I was waiting on the lender. I was calling and calling, I was trying to influence results, but I wasn't getting anywhere, I wasn't making any progress. So then after we spoke, it dawned on me, well, I like this lender, in fact, he's a friend of mine, but they're not the only game in town. Mm -hmm. So what do you think he did? He I called, would imagine, imagine called, he figured there's other lenders in town that he could get, get a hold of. He called three or four other lenders, mm -hmm. started talking about terms, he realized he even got better, some better terms, he's got more options available to him, there's greater responsiveness. So he feels much better about his ability to move forward and get the construction started sooner than later. Well, I'm reminded about how many times we get caught in that doom loop where we're trying to 
force a decision or, you know, force something with our children or a work colleague at work. And we give away, I think, the, the power and the focus of circling back to our own behavior and making the choice that your client did, which is, you know, I don't have to, you know, force this person, this lender that I'm working with now, I can just go find a different lender. And what that do to a stress level, Bob? And so what I saw yesterday was the smile. He felt he was more relaxed. He he spoke to me about how he just he simply had a better outlook on where this very significant project was going. So his stress levels were reduced, and he had clearer thinking, and he was thinking uh, more. I'd say more about the future. Fantastic. Think about bucket three for a moment. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Great, uh, great experiences he's had. So bucket three. So these are items in life that you nor I don't uh, control nor influence, right? So you and I can't control the weather. We can't control the stock market, economy. And in this COVID era that we find ourselves in, in the pandemic's heightened impact on the economy, employment, stock market, decisions the government's making. We have no control over these things. So in light of this, in light of the socioeconomic conditions we find ourselves in today, we want to effectively manage the time that we're spending in bucket three. Mm. The uncertainty, Chuck, the ambiguity associated with the pandemic, other events that are taking place today is very stressful on us. Now we'll unpack ways to respond to that most effectively in, our, uh, in this current reality. We'll, we'll learn a little more about that later. And what we know from neuroscience is that uncertainty and ambiguity in large enough doses not only impact our decision making, but under stresses, of course, we're not making our best decisions. Uh, that's a, that becomes pretty obvious. Um, but if we're not careful, it can actually impact our cognitive abilities. Mm. And over long enough, over long enough periods of time, Chuck, it can actually impact negatively impact our immune system. So. And one of the, the, the last thing that we, we clearly, we're all going to recognize this one. It also impacts our interpersonal relationship effectiveness. It reduces our ability to have great relationships with others. And of course, our relationships are going to suffer. So I have a quick story to share uh, to, to kind of illustrate this point. So I'm a faculty member for uh, Larimer County's Workforce Development Center here in uh, northern Colorado. And to facilitate leadership workshops for small business owners and their, their teams. And during the stay at home phase, we were running workshops on leading through crisis. And during one of the workshops, um, I noticed that some of the business owners were really focused on the outside forces. Mm. Their mindset was this is happening to me. This is happening to my business and I don't have any control. I'll contrast that with others in the session who took this perspective. They were thinking, so this is the situation we find ourselves in. What can I do right now to make it better? What's, what are the next steps that I can take? So that first group, you know, we might say they had a, a victim mentality. The latter group's thinking, what I noticed is their thinking was clearer. There was more creativity. They hmm. were less stressed. Hmm. And they were focused on, what am I learning in this workshop today? And how can I apply it in, and put it into action today or this week? for the benefit of my clients, my team. You notice they were other focused, my clients, my team, my business, my family. So you can imagine if they, if both those groups of people continued on their, their separate paths with different outcomes that they might've experienced. Yeah, I'll be curious to hear a little bit more as we go today about you know what that outcome difference might've been. You know, if you look at the three buckets we have there on the screen, what are the risks of focusing too heavily on bucket three? Like what, 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 where does that, where does that affect us? That's a, that's a great question. So the primary risk as we've been alluding to here is increasing our stress levels, hmm. right? As, as our stress goes up, our thinking's clouded and this leads to reduced effectiveness in our decision-making. Now, significant increases in our stress, physiologically, Chuck, impairs our decision-making and impairs our brain. The blood flow is actually reduced when we're under stress to our prefrontal cortex. 
as we know, that's the logical thinking part of our brain. And we're actually operating out of our fight for flight mm. part of our brain, the amygdala. Yeah. So here's something we can all relate to. How many of us have ever said, I was so upset or I was so angry, I couldn't think straight? And that would, in fact, be true. So from a very practical point of view, another thing that happens is we're less productive. Mm -hmm. We're heavily focused on these outside events that are outside of our control, that ambiguity and that uncertainty have skyrocketed. Whatever we're getting done, it's likely not to be our best work. It's likely not to be our best thinking. I'll give you a quick example that's that's financially uh, relevant to all of us today. So back uh, in 2008 during uh, the Great Recession, and some dear friends who were both uh, husband and wife who were both very successful professionals and were experiencing the, the, the massive drop in the, in the market. And he says to me one day, Bob, you know, Sue and I are seriously talking about taking all of our money out of the market. Hmm. And as he, he shared this with me, it was the proverbial stashing money in the mattress story. Hmm. That's how, that's how concerned he was. Now I remember also that he, he worked out of his home and he was consumed with the market news, with the business news. He had a TV in his office and he had the business news, news on all day long. Uh, so fast forward a bit and he had met with his financial advisor and he shared with me how appreciative he was because what his advisor did for him was focus him, refocus him on his his and his wife's goals, what their future was. Has anything changed with respect to what their goals were? Hmm. And so as he as he redirected his attention to his goals, and he and his wife started talking about different scenarios. Okay, here's the reality we find ourselves in. However, our goals haven't changed. So what are the actions we can take today? And the punchline here is that I recall how appreciative he was of his advisor's calm approach. He kept the client focused on his goals. And here's, the, here's another key element. He made decisions that were aligned with those goals and his values. What was most important to he and his wife rather than reacting hastily. You know what I'm struck by is in order to do that, the advisor had to know what the client's goals were and know what their values were to help them step back from the trees and look at the forest. And I know while planning, you know, doesn't account for every uncertainty when you get emotional, if you've got a game plan, if you know what your goals are, you can circle back to that game plan and look at those goals. It enables people to calm down. And when we're calmer, we can think more clearly. I also know from our work at Think to Perform that the dominant factor in portfolio growth, not portfolio performance, the dominant factor in portfolio growth is saving and investing behavior. So how much someone saves and invests and how long they stay invested matters more than asset allocation, investment selection, and market timing combined. And saving and investing behavior, to your point and the three bucket theory, is the one thing that we can control. That's a bucket one activity. That's exactly right, Chuck. That's exactly right. Keeping focus there. If you, as our listeners are thinking about this, you almost get this sense of, of groundedness. Mm -hmm. I've got a plan. I've got a game plan. Let's let's get back. Let's get back focused on that. And how do I stay on track? It's like anything in life. Uncertainty and ambiguity are always present. As Doug says, uh, you know, the certainty of uncertainty. We can count on that. And that's why having a plan is so important to us. When I absent the plan, I might get derailed by my emotion, right? Which we've all right. done from time to time. So exactly right. the plan helps me recenter myself, calm down, and make better choices. Are, are there any other benefits of focusing our time and energy on bucket one, Bob? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's make sure we're clear. We're not advocating that you just put your head down and focus on a task list. Here's the key. We're advocating balance. Remain informed and action oriented. Right? 
So having said that, focusing our time and our energy on the things we can control, bucket one, that's our behavior and our decision making, we begin to notice a few things. One is a benefit of uh, clarity of thought, which is leading to, leads us to an, an action orientation. Mm. So while no one knows how the current spikes that we're seeing today in cases around 30 plus states around the country are going to affect the economy, the market, returning to school, if I look inward, one financial decision I can make is to focus on improving my saving and investing behavior, something you and I have talked about a few times. So, you know, we've talked with clients about this idea that over the past three months, I'm not going out to eat as much. Maybe I, for a while there, I wasn't going to the gym. I'm not taking that big vacation. I'm not driving to work. I'm not spending money on dry cleaning. So one choice I can make is to get that money into action. What are the smart choices I can make to put that money to work for me? And that's focused on my saving and my investing behavior. Mm. I love Another it. benefit, yeah, that's critical today. We've got to we've got to manage this. So another benefit, it's a greater sense of engagement by focusing on bucket one. Let's think about our health for a moment, right? So if I look at this situation as a challenge and I create simple goals for myself, improve my diet, my exercise, those are the only two things that I really have control over to have a positive influence on my, my health. I ride my bike, I try out yoga with my wife. I get out there into the mountains and I hike. She and I have planted a vegetable garden. I spend some time eating some, making some healthy meals. Of course, all, all along there, I'm, if I'm out there moving like that, having those endorphins going through my body has got some benefits to it, mm. right? So by taking these steps, I've also grown in bucket two. This is activity that's influencing my long-term health and my well-being. So quick story for you that uh, one challenge I had because we did, we did try out yoga um, and I want to so my wife and I tried this out, and I want you to picture this. So one of these positions is called, uh, in, in yoga, is called the tree pose. Mm. So, so imagine balancing on one leg. Let's say it's your right leg. The sole of your left foot, it's placed on your inside of your, your, uh, your thigh there. Your arms are stretched out over your head. You're reaching over your head, and maybe your eyes are closed. You're looking up. And Chuck, I have to tell you, the first time I tried this, uh, my tree came crashing down on the floor. Almost knocked the knock the cats off the table. Uh, so I got a little work to do on my, <laughs> on my yoga pose. Sounds like how my tree, um, my tree pose would end. <laughs> All right. So last, as I just hinted, great importance. This is critical. When we focus on what we can control, bucket one, we're going to notice that our influence, bucket two, is going to grow. So go back to that story I mentioned earlier about the two uh, groups of business owners that were uh, in those uh, crisis leadership sessions. When I checked back in with the ones that were, uh, had clear focus and, and were thinking about what can I do right now, what can I do today to make the situation better, they realized that because of the steps that they were taking, their action orientation, they were, taking, um, they were focused on the present moment and they realized that their best staff were sticking with them. They were in the game as well. Their customers noticed this. And they were supporting them in any way that they could. A couple of them, there was a restaurant, another was a brewery owner, and their customers were trying to figure out, how can we help you? We see you trying to move through this together. So as business owners, they noticed that the influence grew as a result of their choice to focus on bucket one. Well, I'm guessing their, their demonstration of focusing on what they can control was contagious and influenced those that they were trying to lead. Would that be accurate? It's, that's exactly right. Think, think about it for a, a moment, the impact. Of, you know, again, we're all, in varying ways, we're all responding to the ambiguity and the uncertainty. What's it like for us to see someone who's focused on improving the moment, trying to figure out how to, to improve the, the business situation, the results? What's it like for us to see that? And to your point, that modeled behavior made a big impact, not only on the staff, but also on their clients, their clients recognized it. So there's the power for this. Yeah, it sounds like a, you know, a pretty profound concept that can influence not only my life, but 
you know, those around me. That's, that's what, um, that's, I would say that's, that's again, it's exactly right. You know, just to wrap for all of our listeners here today, I want to kind of tie for those of you who may not have heard all four of these uh, sessions or those who did listen to all four, maybe kind of a way to think about everything we've covered so far, because each session is building on the last. So we started with a concept of uncertainty. Increases in uncertainty drive increases in stress levels, Bob mentioned. We're at unlevels, unprecedented levels of uncertainty. You know, 12 years ago, as Bob mentioned, with the downturn in the stock market, we had stock market uncertainty. Today, we have uncertainty in the stock market, uncertainty in the economy. Many of us have job uncertainty. We have uncertainty in our children going to school. We have uh, a health uncertainty. And given that 2020 is an election year, we have political uncertainty. So, in our lifetime, there has not been a time where the level of uncertainty has been greater. And with that increase in uncertainty and ambiguity comes an increase in our stress level. With an increase in our stress comes a, a decrease in our ability to focus, to make good decisions, manage our emotions, and manage our, our behavior. The so what to that is if we're aware of how much stress we have in our lives because of this uncertainty, we have a choice. We can improve our stress management or stress capacity, and we improve that through things like exercise, diet, drinking water, getting, some, getting plenty of rest. That improves our stress capacity. But we can also improve the way we respond to stress, which is the three-bucket theory that Bob has been sharing with us today, which is in order to improve how I respond to stress, I focus on things that I can control and I take my attention away from the things that I cannot control. Those two, those two applications of improving stress capacity and deciding what I'm gonna focus on help me respond and make better decisions under pressure. Anything you'd add there, Bob, in closing? Yeah, a couple of quick uh, tips. So first, I encourage you to do is pay attention to your attention. What are you focused on? To bucket one, two, or three items. Be objective about how much news and information you're consuming. Uh, again, this is different for each one of us, but you have to ask that question. Is what I'm doing helping me remain informed or am I becoming consumed by it? So what's working for you? What might be working against you? Um, how do you notice this? How do you notice what's going on stress-wise in your body? So what I'd ask you to do is pay attention to your physiology. What's your body saying to you? Where does stress show up for you? Is your neck tense? Do you have headaches? What are your sleep patterns looking like? Are you becoming fatigued? Our body has a lot to tell us if we only listen. Then I ask you to pay attention to relationships. How are you treating those that you care about? Getting short and snappy with them? Uh, do we notice, pay attention to how they're responding to us? That can tell us some things. So as stress rises, we can become increasingly agitated and even withdrawn. And that has negative effects on our relationships. Not good. Last thing to challenge you with is pay attention to how you're using your time. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett remind us, Chuck, even with all the resources they have available to themselves, they can't buy more time. Mm. Right? So I challenge our listeners to, to focus. Are you putting first things first? And so to put a bow around this, um, you know, all of this reminds us that we can fall into patterns of behavior that just don't work well for us. Stay informed, but don't allow things that you can't control to derail you. Mm. Remember, you have a choice about which buckets you focus your time and your energy on. And remember, as it says on the screen there, successful people put their primary focus on bucket one. So with that, Chuck, I'd like to thank you. Appreciate this time today. You bet, Bob. Thanks for joining us here for this fantastic session on the Three Bucket Theory. Uh, as a reminder for our audience, our fifth session will go deeper into a topic around behavioral financial advice, which is about how emotions impact our decisions with our money and with our investments. We'll be talking about psychological phenomena and neuroscience with another of my Think to Perform colleagues. If you'd like to learn more about Think to Perform, you can go to our website at thinktoperform.com or contact our director of sales, Kyle DeBell, 
at katiebell at, at thinkperform.com. Um, you can also reach out to your First Citizens Associate to learn more about some of the things we talked about here today. Um, you can also visit the First Citizens website at firstcitizens.com. With that, for Bob Nedball and myself, I'm Chuck Walkendorf. I wish you a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you in our next session. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.